Hi, I'm Ryan Manchi with Basis Technologies, and we are talking marketing innovation and advertising inspiration. And I'm joined by Jill Kress, CMO of H&R Block. Jill, welcome. Thank you. I'm Chief Marketing and Experience Officer. Oh my God, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't Don't want to lose sight of the yeah, experience. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we I, let's talk about that. Like yeah. before, before I even get to any of these questions, what's the how do you how do you break up those roles and like what's the different areas of focus there between the marketing and the experience side? As we seek to become even more customer obsessed we're always leading with customer data customer insights and the way we connect with our audience through media has to come to, to life through our digital product experience and so one of the things that really attracted me to this role was extending I've worked I've done some customer experience work in my past and yeah. building apps and working on Priceless.com when I was at MasterCard, but to have experience properly within my remit was really exciting because yeah. that's really where it all pays off, right? That is the brand and the product yeah. is the experience, our .com, our apps, and how we meet the consumer in this very Im important moment that we have with them is a big part of the, the job. So in addition to brand creative, PR, go-to-market strategy teams, I have the customer experience team, and it's it's um, really rewarding, and keep learning. That's awesome, yeah. that's awesome, that's very great. And you, you talked about a little bit from your MasterCard experience, but you've got, um, between that, your experience now at H&R Block, PayPal, really rich kind of history background within the financial services, so I've got to imagine it's got to be so helpful with what you're doing to be able to grow, whether it's the experience side or yeah. general kind of marketing side. And you talk about how that experience has helped you become so successful in the role yeah. um, in over a year now, right, that you've been in it. And then maybe some of those things that you've learned uh, for folks that are maybe not as familiar with that financial services category. Yeah, yeah. I had the, the good fortune to really start my career in earnest at yeah. MasterCard. I worked at a regional bank in Chicago. MasterCard was such a terrific company to grow as a human and, and to grow as a an executive. I get people's relationship with money. Um, it's a very intimate relationship and the power of how we think about the things that we buy and what they mean in our lives. I, I detoured outside of financial services after 22 years at MasterCard and I went to National Geographic, which was another very purpose-led brand. Um, and we were very much on a digital transformation yeah. there really taking all of our iconic print content yeah. and bringing it into the digital sure. era. We were the most followed brand on Instagram when I started, but when I left, we had achieved over 100 million followers it's on incredible. Instagram. Uh, it was really incredible. And I found my way back into financial services at PayPal and Venmo. And I think this incredible opportunity to be at H&R Block, where we are motivated by our purpose, which is to provide help and inspire confidence around what is a complicated experience for yeah. many Americans, but also a really important point in time for them. For over 75% of Americans, their tax moment is their most important financial intake of the year. 75% of Americans get a refund. And so really ensuring that they get you know, every credit and every deduction to maximize that um, opportunity is is what we do. Yeah. So we do taxes, but it's not it's not why we do it. And we're expanding beyond taxes into financial services. So the exciting thing was I've worked on brands that are in transformation like National Geographic. I have the commercial experience of working at MasterCard and understanding mm -hmm. people's complex relationship with money. And at PayPal, I learned growth marketing on an epic scale. We had anywhere from 300 to 400 million customer consumer clients when, oh, wow. when I was there. And so bringing all of that together for the next chapter of growth for H&R Block um, is a really exciting opportunity. Yeah, that's, uh, that's amazing. I feel like um, it kind of goes into what I wanted to ask you about next, the, um, the idea of telling that H&R Block story uh, from that branding perspective, from just like really authentic storytelling yeah. as you look to expand as you kind of reinforce a brand that I feel like I think most people know, but maybe like uh, just because they they recognize the locations on you know through th you know, throughout any any major city right yeah. throughout the United States. Um, how do you create those emotional connections to tell that story to really elevate the H and R Block brand? Yeah, you mentioned our locations. So during tax season, 
we have over 10,000 retail locations across the U.S. Just to give context, Walmart has 4,500 locations. Oh, wow. okay. So there was a statistic, I don't know that it's currently validated, but at one point in time, we were within five miles of every American. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so what's interesting about that is that is our legacy for 70 years. That is our, our heritage and our expertise is that human expertise and care that we provide to our clients and prospects who are both consumers and small businesses on this very important moment. Yeah. At the same time, we also provide online do-it-yourself yeah. tax services. And what's been interesting is we thought about how we went to market last tax season was we wanted to both lean into our legacy of being a retail, inhuman, expertise-known brand, but really disrupt ourselves and become more of a challenger brand in what we can do through hnrblock.com mm. for consumers and and our consumers and small businesses to do their taxes themselves with us. So our awareness of what we do in that traditional legacy HR Block yeah. brand is incredibly high, 90 plus percent. But if you want to do your taxes yourself, um, one of our competitors, Turbo TurboTax, has owns that mind share with consumers. So this year we had to both lean into who we are and what we're so well known for, mm -hmm. but also disrupt ourselves. And we became a bit of a challenger brand this yeah. year and really decided to take the gloves off and um, take on TurboTax a little bit, leverage a little bit of their equity. We actually use their name in our, in our advertising yeah. to reinforce that you could do the, the same things um, with our brand and take advantage of some of the, the pain points that they have from a customer satisfaction standpoint and things like that. Yeah. So, we had to be both functional and emotional. And you know, to do that challenger brand thing, what we decided to do was to turn taxes on its head this mm -hmm. year. And like when you say tax season, sometimes it brings like a, a sense of dread almost. It's like, oh my gosh, my taxes. But the end result for most yeah. Americans is positive. 75% of Americans get a refund. Um, and so we actually launched our campaign this year with it's tax season. Like yeah. it's, you know, celebrate the season. It's an incredible financial opportunity. And we had some fun with it. And one of our um, best performing spots was a woman at a awards type ceremony, like a la, you know, you know, we had a green carpet uh, for our brand, sure, which is, yeah. brand logo, which Perfect. is green. But it, yeah. she was receiving yeah. award for like, you know, best performance in switching tax providers. And, you know, she does this cute little, like, I did it, I did my taxes myself, and I switched from TurboTax to H&R Block. Um, so it was really, it, it was fun. So we brought a little humor yeah. into our brand, yeah. um, which I think is important for um, a legacy brand that needs to attract a younger audience. Yeah, especially something that, like, taxes can be daunting. Yeah. And I think the fact that you're able to make it more approachable and the fact that, like, hey, we're gonna help you get all that money back that you can get every single opportunity that there is uh that's that's incredible i feel like people yeah. people should be excited about it so what a, maximum what, refund guaranteed yeah, maximum refund guaranteed all the time yeah i love it i love it yeah and you think about who your customers are and prospective yeah. customers yeah it's really any any american right a, yeah. a, a, adult right um and you know the the country is incredibly diverse um, and yes. I know that H&R Block has done some really interesting things focused on diversity equity and yeah. inclusion above and beyond kind of like a buzzword or like hey we just need to kind of rubber stamp it and say hey we did this Very can you talk so. about how you all have approached that and maybe yeah. even how you've thought about that within your your marketing within your advertising the talent that you have the the partners that you work with um, maybe even suppliers too that you may work with. Like, what does that approach look like, and how have you all really taken a stance to be? Um, I hate to even say progressive, but just like uh, be smart about it. Yeah, there's so much I could say, yeah. and I've already said a lot. Yeah. So, um, here's what I'd say: There's 150 million Americans that pay taxes every year, so it's a huge addressable yeah. market, and there's very you know small new entrants into the category. So. To grow, it is really about getting people to switch from mm -hmm. one one way or another. But yeah. it's a huge addressable market, and so to do that, we do lots of um, you know traditional marketing that we've already sure. talked about. But our brand purpose comes to life through through two really important platforms for H and R Block. One, which is called Make Every Block Better. Mm -hmm. So we are a founder-led company. We were founded by two brothers, Richard and Henry Block, almost 70 years ago, hmm. in Kansas City, where um, our headquarters still are. 
and they believed deeply in what I shared earlier, which was our purpose, mm -hmm. making this moment easier, providing help and giving expertise and care, and then really investing in those communities at a local level. So we talk a lot at H&R Block about what we cherish yeah. through that founder-led mentality, while we also change and transform, but one of the things we cherish very much is our investment in the community. So we invest at the local level across the U.S. We have partners with Habitat for Humanity. I had my team out last year renovating awesome. homes in Kansas City. So it's, it's very much like understanding what are the priorities of the local community supporting um, uh, food instability, mm -hmm. um, you know, doing work with Habitat to yeah. provide um, economic growth. Like what happens with Habitat is, you know, when homes are in better shape, the economic stability of those neighborhoods all, yeah, rises, yeah. right? So we do we do that. The other thing that was a really exciting platform for us um, was a program called a Fair Shot. Hmm. When the NCAA allowed student athletes to earn sponsorship dollars for their name, image, and likeness, yeah. we realized this was going to be a big potential tax conundrum for students who all of a sudden went all this income and perhaps when their tax bill was due, they wouldn't have been prepared. So we wanted to provide tax support to student athletes who were newly um, creating all this income and, yeah. and fame and influence. What we found was that female athletes were only getting 23% of those sponsorship dollars. So we pivoted and we created a platform that created a conversation around the inequity mm -hmm. in sponsorship dollars going to female athletes uh, versus male athletes, and we called that a fair shot. So mm. beyond that, you know, we believe deeply in in diversity, equity, and inclusion through how we how we hire the amazing talent that we have, all the way up to our our board, which is more than uh, fifty percent women. So um, it's really near and dear to being a community led led brand and how we've shown up for over seventy years, yeah. or close to seventy years. That's that, that's awesome. I think it's great where it's like continuing to try new things, but also knowing that. It's such a core of your foundation already. Yeah. It's not like you're deviating too far from what y'all already believe. And exactly. It started from the very beginning. That's that's incredible. And it's who we are. Like that yeah. for a fair shot, it was help this new yeah. audience. Yeah. And what's been amazing is it's really resonated with Gen Z and students. Sure. Brand favorability was yeah. up over 30 yeah. points last year um, with that audience yeah. because we're showing up in a really fun and meaningful, fun through the content, yeah. but meaningful through the work that we're doing with these athletes. Yeah, it's very smart, very smart. So um, that, I, I mean, that, I know that's like one, one campaign, all the overarching campaigns that, that you all offer. When you think about some of the different paid media activations, where have you seen some success on some of the some of the channels, some of the platforms that are out there? There's quite a bit uh, to yeah. be able to choose from. And I've got to imagine some are a little bit more effective than others. Have there been some experimentation and some good success? Maybe you want to highlight? Sure. Well, again, this year was, was about disrupting ourselves yeah. and being uncomfortable with being uncomfortable. And so we did lots of traditional media tactics, um, but we activated in really fun new ways across platforms like TikTok, where we continue to have great success yeah. with the Fair Shot, where our female athletes came in and we did a hashtag challenge where they talked about women who inspired them and it was incredibly successful. Yeah. We use TikTok a lot for financial services. But again, in getting into new channels and reaching new audiences, one of the things that we, we had an insight that when people do their taxes and they finally sit down, often music is involved. And so we worked with Spotify last year oh, cool. to curate a tax prep playlist. Um, and so it was just fun for the brand to show up in new ways with new audiences. And you know, we also did some local activations yeah. for the first time. We've got 10,000 retail locations. And so we, we rocked up in New York City with coffee trucks. Huh. And um, we did the W2 brew, yeah. um, and we gave away uh, we gave away coffee during tax season, and um, just you know, bringing the bringing the brand to life in, in ways that are fun, relevant, and human. So more to come on that. I love that. I love that. Well, thinking about the more to come. Uh, yeah. We we are in the south of France. Uh, we're we're Amazing. in we're, we're in Cannes. Yeah, it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, and there's some buzz up and down the croissette. Yeah. Um, talking about some of these new and emerging technologies. I'm interested, your perspective, Jill, maybe even like some thinking that you had prior to uh, to, to come into the other side of the world. Um, is there an emerging technology that you feel like is just completely overblown? And is there anything that maybe is on the other side that it's emerging, but you feel like, you know what? That's something, that's something that we need to look at or that may revolutionize the industry. Well, I'm, I don't think there's a conversation that's happening here where 
we've waited this long to talk about the topic of AI. Every single discussion, <laughs> whether it's supposed to be a conversation yeah. about AI or not, sure. is uh, it's it's a it's a very very hot topic. So, is it is it overblown? No, I think just wrestling with what is old AI yeah. versus what is new generative AI. You know, we prepare taxes. We have you know 70 years of tax data. So AI and really using that to, to learn and yeah. to understand how we can say the things we do, like maximum refund guaranteed, we actually are able to use you know historical approach to AI to look at previous year's tax returns mm -hmm. to uncover additional refunds. So AI is very much a part of how we do what we do. It's always been, right? Yeah, yeah it always yeah, has yeah, been. Yeah. We and and now um, you know getting into generative AI and what that's going to do in the way of how we can provide even more value. How we can you know speed really matters mm -hmm. if you're getting a refund um, and you know it, you generally want it fast. Yeah. So um, we're launching some new partnerships that we're really excited about cool. um, to bring us into what generative yeah. AI will unlock for us um, as a brand, but for our customers to be able yeah. to do a better job for them. So I guess that's like the, that is the the topic, uh, that's the topic so of the day. So it's kind of a little both, kind of right? Both, it, right? It may, yes. may be a little overblown, but when we go beyond the broad sense and like find those specific applications, there's some real opportunity Oh, for there. sure, yeah. yeah. I'm excited, I'm really excited yeah. and I feel like I can't learn enough fast enough. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, with every, Scott Galloway was talking this morning um, at the WPP beach and he was, saying like with every disruption, going back to the in industrial revolution, oh, yeah. like things will change, people will lose jobs, but then more jobs will, yeah. will come of that. And so we have to be prepared, like we have to be ready, we have to be curious, we have to be learning yeah. um, so that we're, we're able to, as leaders, embrace what's happening so we can continue to do yeah. great things for our clients. Don't don't fear the change, but don't over buy into the hype, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and just it. like get there and, you know, learn and yeah. and figure out how to test into it in ways that are smart for your business. I love it, I love it. Well, I can't wait to hear maybe over the next year the, yeah. the ways that are smart for H&R Block's business uh, and some great new things that you come up with. Um, but I can't thank you enough for taking some time out of your very busy schedule to sit down and chat about some uh, advertising inspiration and some marketing innovation. So thank you so much, Jill. Happy Appreciate to it. do it. Avec yeah. plaisir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A tout à l'heure. <laughs>